everybody. Welcome back to Pediatric Therapy Essentials. My name is Dr. Heather Sossaman and I'm a pediatric physical therapist. Well, in this week's episode, we're going to continue our four-part series on simple things you can do with and explore the playground ball. So stick around. and welcome back. Well, today is part three of our four-part series on simple things you can do with. And today we're gonna to explore the playground ball. Well, for those of you that aren't familiar, a playground ball is something kids use frequently when they're at school. It's the number one kind of ball that physical education teachers use for most of their games and activities. And the unique thing about a playground ball is that it's a little bit thicker and firmer and can basically take a little bit more abuse than the simple plastic balls that you find in places like Walmart. Now playground balls are very inexpensive and I'll put a few links in the description box below of places that you can find them. But they're a very versatile and simple tool that you can do all kinds of fun and crazy things with. So let's jump into the video and check them out. Well, I guess number one is pretty obvious. You can work on your ball skills with a playground ball. Now in part one of this series, I shared with you guys how to use a larger therapy ball for many of these skills if your child is having difficulty with a smaller ball, like the playground ball. So feel free to check that video out here. The development of throwing and catching a ball tends to follow a predictable pattern. In the beginning, kids learn to roll a ball back and forth in a sitting position. Once they're able to stand up and they have good balance skills, then they move on to throwing from the standing position. And when they learn to throw, they usually start with an underhand pattern, and then they progress to a chest pass where they push a ball forward with two hands. In terms of catching, kids begin by trapping the ball. And trapping is when they use their arms, chest, and hands to trap the ball against their bodies. With a little more time and practice, they move on to catching the ball with their hands only. Next on my list is using a playground ball to work on your standing balance. There are a couple of simple ways that you can do this. First, you can stand up and place the ball under one foot. This position simulates unilateral stance or standing on one foot. Once you get the hang of this, you can make the task a little more difficult by playing a game, like throwing a ball with a partner. The second option is to place the ball under your foot and then move the ball in small circles. This activity not only challenges your standing balance, but it helps strengthen the muscles in your hips and legs. Next up, using the playground ball as alternative seating. Just like the therapy ball in older kids and adults, the playground ball works as a great seat for younger kids. Sitting on a ball allows for movement while sitting, which can improve attention and engagement. Clearly Connor's not the correct size for this activity, but at least he's entertaining. Next on my list is what I call the color bounce game. To play, tape some pieces of paper with large colored circles on them up on the wall. The circles I'm using are available to download for free on my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com, but you can just as easily use some plain computer paper and color some big circles yourself. Once you have the circles up on the wall, have the child stand about three to five feet away from the wall. Then call out the colors, and each time you call a color, have the child throw the playground ball at the color and catch it on the rebound. The color bounce game is great for working on skills like throwing, catching, balance, and visual tracking. Just be careful the first few times the child throws the ball at the wall. If they use too much force, the ball can have a stronger rebound than they might be expecting. The last activity on my list for things you can do with a playground ball is activating the VMO. Okay, so what in the world is the VMO? Well, the VMO is one of the four muscles in your quadriceps. It's located on the inner portion of the front of your thigh. This muscle is really important in helping your kneecap stay in the right place when your knee is moving. 
I actually have a video on the muscles of the leg if you'd like some more information. I'll link the video in a card above and in the description box below. When strengthening your VMO, a playground ball can be a very useful tool. If you place the ball between your legs and squeeze as you perform a bridge, you activate the VMO. To perform a bridge, lie on your back with your knees bent and feet shoulder width apart. Place the ball between your knees, then slowly raise your bottom off of the floor. Be sure to squeeze the ball to keep it in place. You can also activate the VMO by using a playground ball during wall slides. To perform a wall slide, lean your back against a wall and place your feet about 12 to 18 inches in front of you. Then, with the ball between your knees, slowly bend your knees until you are in a sitting position supported by the wall. Hold the position for 10 to 20 seconds, or longer if you're able, and then return to standing. There are two important things to remember about a wall slide. First, your feet should be far enough away from the wall that when you bend your knees, the knee never moves in front of the foot. And second, that you don't bend your knees too much. I usually recommend no more than a 90 degree angle at the hip and knees. Make sure you squeeze that ball during your wall slides to really work that VMO. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed all those playground ball activities. And if you have any more great ideas, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. I would love to share them with everyone else. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. And if you enjoy this channel and you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. I do have new videos out every Saturday. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you next Saturday. Bye.